This week on CrossFeed. You know, this sermon sounds really familiar. Convert and be dead to your family. Should we even discuss this story? Sunday school? That's so last year. <laughs> I got a better idea. Skip Sunday school and go to Denny's instead. And welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio, outside of Cleveland. Hey, I'm Jim Butler, pastor of St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Dedham, Massachusetts, just up. And it's good to be with everybody uh, for this week and this week's edition. I have to apologize a little bit. Um, looks like we haven't had this on Skype before, but it looks like we're having a little bit of a delay tonight. Um, uh, unless it's the fact that Jim's just dragging because we're recording this an hour and a half later than we usually do at night. Uh, but I, I think it's more the uh, some sort of internet hiccup. It might have something to do with the fact that um, we don't have a phone right now. We had a storm that went through. I don't know how we still have DSL, but we don't have a dial tone on our phone. Um, it's a multi-line system. The church line still works. Um, the DSL still works, but we don't have a phone, and I called it in, and they're not going to be able to come out and fix it for four days. So I'm glad we have our cell phones. So, um, you may dispense with the pleasantries, Commander. I'm here to put you back on schedule. Well, let's just uh, start with uh, with borrowing sermons. All right, you ever heard a sermon and you, you thought you heard that sermon before, but you're not quite sure where? Could be that your pastor got it online. Aren't you wired online, surfing the web? Now, um, <clears throat> yeah, there are a, a plethora of uh, websites out there, uh, which I thought was kind of funny. It's, you know, you can go uh, uh, Assembly of God to Wesleyan. Uh, you can even do Jewish sermons online. Uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, uh, one is called SermonSearch.com, which has 100,000 subscribers, uh, paying 20 bucks, 22 bucks a month. Man, what a ripoff. <laughs> Sorry, I, this is funny for me because I run a site that um, lcmspastor dot com, where there's you know hundreds of sermons up there, and they're all free. Most of them are just outlines, and most of them are from me, so they're probably not worth a whole lot. <laughs> um, and there's another one out there called sermoncentral dot com, which I've used for illustration sometimes. Um, yeah, you know, and I don't know. Um, uh, I mean, I, I've actually had sermons published, uh, and with the encouragement for people to use them. Uh, and I've which, used them. <laughs> yeah, Dale's <laughs> used them. <laughs> it was funny. No, we, um, and this is, there's, uh, we have a, in the Missouri Senate, we have a, a magazine called Concordia uh, Pulpit Resources, which actually has sermons um, published in it. And, um, and like, especially I, where I'll sometimes use a, a sermon series from somebody else, a published one, um, is in for like a, a Advent series or a Lent series or something like that. And, um, or, you know, there's some really good ones out there. In fact, Jim did one and it was funny because I'd seen it before because it was originally posted on lcmspasser.com. He'd put it up there. And uh, and then he sent me a note saying, hey, you got to pull that down because of copyright, because Concordia Pulpit Resources is going to use it. And then I, I completely forgot about it. And then um, the when I was in Iowa, the the other Missouri Senate pastor that was about five, seven miles away, something like that, um, we would, during Lent, um, we would switch off. The two churches would get together for service, and then we would take turns um, so that we only had to preach half the services. Well, he found this series in Concordia Pulver Resources. He said, this is really good. Let's use this. And so, okay. And, and I'm going, this sounds familiar. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is that series Jim did. People loved it. I have never gotten so many compliments on a sermon before when it was one that I didn't write. <laughs> what can I tell you? You know, <laughs> words fail me there. So, you know, I, I don't, and I'll tell you, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I've been preaching on Ephesians, and 
my first time we had this Ephesians reading, and I don't know, I just, nothing was coming, nothing was coming, and yeah, I just couldn't, and um, so I did, a, I did a, a search on Sermon Central to see what I could find, and there's a Lutheran pastor, I think he's ELCA actually, and he, you know, I didn't steal his sermon, but he had some concepts and some ideas there. That I was able to just, you know, okay, this sparked things into me. Okay, now finally I got some idea of, you know, a direction to do here. Mm-hmm. Um, and overall, I don't think it's it's really, you know, I'm, you know, I mean, they had what was called the Red Bible for a year. It was called the Concordia Bible, and you know, people, you know, they they, they had sermons printed in there. Um, yeah, I, I don't have a problem with it. The only thing I want to make sure though is, is if you use an illustration. Um, you know, don't make it a personal story. Um, you know, steal somebody else's personal story because that doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, one church, they they, 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 yeah, they found the pastor was having, telling all these personal stories, and somebody Googled it and they found them online. Um, yeah, then you're. Lying. And the other thing is, don't say. Yeah, then you're lying. Or it happened in another case. Um, somebody they started off. Said, you know, I can't remember what the sermon was about. And it was, well, I spent this week looking up, uh, you know, definitions of this word. And I, I really, you know, and, and, and th- well, somebody Googled the phrase and, you know, he found it online. And, uh, and then went, this one member of his church wrote to me. I knew this person off on a list and they were like, should I confront him about this? I said, well, yeah, he said he, he was an honest with the congregation. He didn't do this work. He said he did. She said, it was, you know, it didn't bother me except for people in Bible class who went, man, our pastor worked so hard, you know, to spend all week doing this. And, you know, she looked, and I just really wanted to say, he found it online, you know, but she goes, but I didn't want to, you know, publicly humiliate him, embarrass him. I said, well, you know, don't, uh, don't, don't publicly embarrass him, but, you know, call him on it. I think if I told my congregation that I spent half the week <laughs> researching and definitions of a word or something like that, they'd be going, you know, that's great and all, but <laughs> aren't there better things you could be doing? <laughs> but, yeah, I, no, I understand the point, though. Um, yeah, I, you know, I heard um, at one of my uh, my preaching uh, homiletics professors at the seminary uh, told the story about how he was visiting, and this is a guy that, I mean, he's he's teaching at the seminary about preaching, so he's a really good preacher. I always enjoyed um, listening to him preach. And um, he was telling this story about he was visiting this church one time, and he's sitting there listening to the sermon. And the sermon is about his family. But the pastor's saying it as if it were something that happened to him. And, like, he's sitting there with his family, and they're all sitting there going, what the heck? <laughs> he's talking about us, but he's saying it's him. And so, I mean, he, he, this is another one of those published sermons that was published in that same magazine. And um, and so he's, I mean, he's walking out afterwards, shakes the pastor's hand, and the pastor says, thanks for the sermon. <laughs> But yeah, you know, I, I heard another story about a, a, a pastor that he had to, um, you know, it, it, he was in a bind. It was one of those deals where it's Saturday night and you have, you've just had a crazy week and you haven't started your sermon and you're just completely at a loss. And, and so he went and grabbed a copy of the Concordia pulpit, which is uh, um, a collection of, of books of sermons um, that date way back. And um, this one, he's, so he just literally just grabs the sermon, didn't even look at it. It was, you know, it was kind of on the a particular text that he was looking for or, or, or whatever. So, so he's, he's reading the sermon and he realized too late when he heard the words come out of his mouth. Now we're in the middle of the Korean war. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Yep. Now, one thing I liked about uh, this this article, it gave you one good bit of advice. A sermon that's been downloaded 454 times since February looks promising, but you might want to skip the one that's only had four takers in three and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> Although, I mean, realistically, 
um, most sermons you don't know how good they are until you actually download them and read them, unless there's a you know preview or something. But because uh, I thought about that, and I, eh, yeah, who knows? But um, no. I, now the the other the other time I I've, I've borrowed a, few, a sermon online has been Thanksgiving. I don't know what it is with Thanksgiving, but I have a tough time preaching that thing. You know, it's just like well, it's hard because you know, it's all about I, law. Talk, yeah, how am I going to talk about being you know thankful and making sure you're thankful and you know be thankful? And, so I'm always like uh, I usually wind up being you know of course I always want the same thing you know being thankful even in unthankful times. So you know and. Uh, you know, and so I, I just, I just, that's, that's the one celebration each year. I just sit there. Or the other one I sometimes struggle with is um, Christmas or Easter. And it's not that I, I struggle with, you know, but when I'm writing, you know, Easter sermon number three, because we have Easter vigil and we have Easter sunrise and we have Easter uh, festival, uh, you know, I'm trying to, I, I'm burning out sometimes or, um, well, yeah, the other and, one with that? Uh, and not only that, we've got a three year lectionary. So, you know, see, so you've got this three year rotation, but for Christmas, it's the same ones every year. And so like, okay, I've already preached on this text. How many times? And you know, there's, there's only so many Christmas texts. <laughs> You know, I mean, so I, I actually, whenever I preach on Luke two, the, the Christmas story, I just take a piece of it. I never preach on, you know, I never use the whole thing as my sermon text so I can kind of chop it up into little pieces. So I've gotten more to work with other years, but still, oh, I, you know, I've never preached the whole text, uh, for that's too much there. Um, and I'll, I think I always just do want to even take up a phrase. Uh, one year I just did two words, fear not. And then. Talked about the fact that our stomachs sometimes get butterflies. We feel like we have big, I call them fear knots in our our lives. And I said, and to our fear knots, God said, fear not. So, <laughs> I ain't it with puns. All right, let's move on here for this thing, uh, before we, you know, bore the people too much here. Hey, as long as we're talking about preaching, let's go over to Sunday school. Okay. All right. So, uh, how many of you out there... Uh, grew up going to Sunday school, and how many of you, um, your kids go to Sunday school? You know, the thing is, people watching this, their kids probably go to Sunday school. Not necessarily, though. I mean, <laughs> especially the YouTube crowd. <laughs> but, right. uh, um, so, yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, it's Sunday schools are decreasing in attendance, and, uh, you know, people are saying it's because of TV or computers or, um, you know, one of the big ones, and this one I, I hadn't, when when I read it, I went, oh, yeah, of course. And that's the high rate of divorce, right? I mean, I know teaching confirmation class, sometimes we got to deal with, because, you know, we've got a schedule of acolytes that come and light candles and stuff like that. Okay. And so with there's always a couple of kids in the class that when you're putting together the schedule, you have to check with them first to see what Sundays they're available because half the Sundays they're gone at the other parent's place. Right. Well, so, you know, that already cuts them uh, their time in half. And if they're not there on Sunday morning, that means they're not there in Sunday school. Um, but, you know, there's lots of other things, too. Well, the other thing is just the, the size of the family. I mean, now I'm, I'm from a usually large family. We had seven kids in our family. Uh, but, you know, I have four children and that's considered a large family today. You know, it's, it's, you know, generally mom, dad, two kids. So where, you know, the generation ago, four kids, five, four and five kids were not considered unusual in a, in a family. Um, and so uh, uh, because of that, then, you know, you, you have just decline in the, you know, the number of kids that are there uh, because of the size of the families that are there. And then the other thing is, though, is that we baby boomers didn't do a real good job of raising our kids to be churchgoers. I mean, they just did they just didn't, you know. Uh, um, and you know, so the so the so Generation X wound up becoming very unchurched. Mm-hmm. Well, they don't have that tradition of going themselves, so why should they be passing that tradition on to their kids? Yeah, it's your fault. You know? So it's not my fault. I I'm at the tail end. It's almost an I I'm a year from being an Xer, you know. I'm 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 at the very, very tail end. But my older brother, I could blame my you know, my older brothers, uh, you know, who who had no involvement and stuff and didn't raise their kids to, to have an involvement in the church or Sunday school. Um 
Now, I'm fortunate. I mean, we have like 40 kids in our Sunday school. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we, have, we, we were one of the uh, – uh, but I think a lot of that's because of our preschool. It's, it's interesting that our – you know, the biggest crowd we've got is preschool and kindergarten. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it always tapers off the older they get. You know, part of that is um, – and this is something that's just – especially now that I've moved into a suburban community instead of a rural community. Um, you know, in, in rural Iowa – uh, Wednesday night is church night. I mean, it's actually called that in the schools. And, um, and so there's no activities after like five thirty or something like that. Um, on church, on Wednesday nights, so you can have confirmation class and they don't schedule stuff on the, or at least the school won't schedule anything on Sundays or especially Sunday mornings. Um, and once in a while, there's like a district thing, or once in a while, you get like parent leagues um, and that that are these sort of unofficial kind of leagues that'll have stuff, or um, or or maybe the, you know like softball leagues having a there was our softball league there always had on Palm Sunday they'd have their big fundraiser brunch. I was like, really? Uh, Palm? I mean, and it was always on Palm Sunday. You know, that's when a lot of the churches around there did confirmation and, you know, <laughs> I'm like, why would you pick that day? You know, it was just kind of goofy, but, um, I mean, you know, I could see, well, it's always third Sunday in April or something like that, but no, it's Palm Sunday. <laughs> they, they, they timed it for that. So, but, um, yeah, there's, I mean, there's, I'm coming here and, and there's all these activities going on. You can't just automatically have confirmation class on Wednesday nights because the kids might all have stuff going on that night, you know? We're having our uh, orientation this Sunday just to find out, see, you know, what we can do about scheduling and, and figure out when we're going to do it. And, um, and you know, Sunday school, a lot of parents, you know, they don't want to make the effort of bringing them. You know, I think the other problem is, look at your adult, you know, you talk about the numbers decreasing as, as you get older. Look at your adult Bible class. All right. Most churches get what? 10% of their Sunday attendance actually coming to Bible class too. I think that's that's pretty pretty average. It's 10%, right? Well, you know, if parents aren't going to Sunday school or Bible class or we call it family education hour or whatever you want to call it, you know, what message are they sending to their kids? If you drop off your kids at Sunday school, what are you telling them? You're telling them this is a little kid thing. You know, I, I've gotten to the point that I don't like the term Sunday school. I like that they call it family education hour here, although they still call it Sunday school too, you know, but, um, or if, but it, and I mean, changing the name doesn't necessarily help because it's, you know, everybody knows it's Sunday school, you know, no matter what you call it, but it's, it's sad. You know, this article did have a very interesting, a little history um, that it started out uh, during England's uh, Industrial Revolution uh, among the rowdy poor. Um, there was a newspaper editor uh, by the name of Robert Rakes uh, came up with Sunday classes to reach out to the poor in the 1780s. Now, in the Lutheran Church, uh, Sunday school was actually frowned upon. Um, because they said, well, that's what Lutheran day schools are for. And, if, and, and, you know, and they also said that's what the parents are for. And this is really interesting because they said, look, if you have Sunday school and you use Sunday school to teach the children of the church the basics of the Christian faith, then the parents will start to perceive that as that's the Sunday school teacher's job. That's not my job as a parent. And guess what? They were right. That's exactly what happened. So, but unfortunately, if the parents stop sending their kids to Sunday school, that doesn't mean that they pick up the ball and, you know, and start teaching the kids at home either. You know, I mean, frankly, it's the, the parents that always bring their kids to Sunday school are most likely to be the same parents that teach their kids at home too. Or send them to Lutheran Day School, or, or, or I mean, or whatever your denomination is, to send them to a parochial school. Yep. So yeah, you're right. It was frowned upon, and uh, which was unfortunate. But uh, 
But uh, now, of course, CPH is one of the biggest publishers of Sunday School curricula out there. So, uh, just it's gotten a lot better like, over the years, too. You're only here because you're the best of the best. I don't know, man. I look at those pictures they've got now, and that stuff goes back to well, the 1940s. Yes, they stuff. could come up with a better, better picture. Hey, you know what it is with some of these parents? You know what they're doing? They're dropping off their kids. They're grabbing a copy of the church bulletin, and they're going to they're Wendy's. They're going to Denny's. I mean, they're going to Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got a, a Texas, what doing. <laughs> Texas branch of Denny's um, has fallen under some attack by uh, Jeff Wag, um, and uh, he uh, went to this Denny's in Texas, and they have a um, there at the the Denny's. It says, "Bring us a copy of your church bulletin." And we will donate 10% of the amount of your receipt to your local church and enjoy 10% off your bill. Um, to go orders, welcome. And then it says, please make sure the name of the church and the full address are on the bulletin for proper distribution. So um, so he's saying, oh, this is discrimination. All right? If you are a church goer, then you get a discount on your bill. Um, and I, apparently he's not real concerned. He didn't really have much to say about the, um, the, you know, giving money to the church, but, oh, they're giving a discount to churchgoers. This is religious discrimination. What do you think, Jim? Discriminated? Shut up! Oh, come and see the violence inherent in the system! Help, help! I'm being repressed! I'm for anything that gets me money, so, you know... <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, you know, um, what if we, no, what if, what if it was the opposite? Uh, bring in your Bolton and, um, you know, you're not going to get 10% off. Everybody else is going to get 10% off except you people who bring in your, your Bolton. Uh, what you could argue, though, um, what they could argue is this is advertising. I mean, any restaurant will tell you one of the biggest times of the week for uh, uh, um, for uh, uh, business is right after church on Sunday. Well, yeah, especially a place like Denny's that advertises brunches and breakfast stuff and, you know, that kind of people after church want to go out for brunch instead of going to Sunday school. <laughs> or, do they, or they just want or you know, my family um, for a while there, I mean, it was just between getting all four, at the time we had five kids, we had another foster daughter at the time, between getting all five kids ready to go to church, ready to go to church and, you know, me doing, you know, Sunday school, or the, you know, the, the, me doing the adult Bible class and, and, and stuff, and we'd come home, and my wife said, me, I didn't feel like cooking anything. My wife didn't feel like cooking anything. So we'd all go out. Mm -hmm. Sure. And, uh, you know, so we'd all go out to eat, and we always go now. We didn't actually. There was one Denny's up here that way, uh, up in uh, Chicopee that we went to a couple of times. But yeah, you know, we go to these these breakfast type places all the time, um, and we just enjoyed going there. And so I, you know, you could argue this guy says this is um, it violates Title II of the Civil Rights Act, of 1964, which states. Uh, all persons shall be entitled to the full and equal enjoyment of the goods, services, facilities, privileges, advantages, accommodations of any place of, of a public accommodation, yada, yada, yada. Um, you know, I guess if you said, look, I, I went 10% off too, then, you know, you can make a fuss of it. they probably give it to you. But, uh, you know, but I can see them, you know, look, we're trying to drum up business. And uh, if we can do it by giving 10% discount to uh, 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 people, and they get a slight, they get a small donation to their church, which, by the way, because we're giving it to a nonprofit, we can write off our tax, our taxes mm -hmm. as a business. Um, then you know that this is this is our way of drumming up business. So you know, people are are comparing this to well, what if it was, you know, ten percent to uh, off uh, for white people, you know, or, or something like that. All right. Well, that would be totally different. That's discrimination. That's racism. Because they don't say what church it has to be all right you know you could bring in if if you're at your your atheist um ethical society meeting that week held on to your little you know flyer or whatever from there and um and brought that with you 
I'm assuming that you would still get the discount. It doesn't say just Southern Baptists, you know, or something like that. So, no, anybody, no matter who you are, you know, basically, if, if anything, what they're promoting is um, people doing what what is, you know, perceived as for the good of society or, or something like that. And, you know, and and, and you can you can debate about that, but, you know, it's, it's but it's it's really not even that. It's just, yeah, they know who their target demographic is. You know, and you know, it, it was kind of funny if you read the the comments on this. There was uh, one guy said, um, and I actually ended up commenting on this because it just floored me the way he said it. He said, "What if, what if uh, it was they were giving a discount to only people in green shirts, and you happen to wear a yellow shirt that day?" And, and I thought, green shirts, huh? What if it's St. Patrick's Day? You know, I've seen lots of places that if you come in wearing green, they give you a discount on St. Patrick's Day. And that is an ethnic holiday. And it's a Roman Catholic, a one specific religion holiday. No, it's not really celebrated like that anymore. But that's, I mean, really, it is an ethnic, specific religion holiday. All right. And nobody ever complains about that. We're living in a dictatorship. So, I don't know. I, I think that there are bigger problems in this world than people giving discounts for goofy things. Well, I, 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 and there's a couple, you know, I mean, he, the guy said, you know, I went to a dentist in Arizona and asked if I could take care of the just tempers a discount for churchgoers and looked at me strange. This is, this is not Denny's corporate policy. Mm-hmm. This is a local Denny's franchisee. Uh, that's, you know, his thing at his local church um, and the, the, I, mean, I mean his local community um, and the fact is you know as a business owner he can give the discount to these people if he wishes he can give he can give 10 percent of their bill as you know for, for a, a write-off on his taxes if he wants to as long as he gives his nonprofit organizations uh, if he said no, oh, no this is only going to go to St. John Lutheran Church and it's just to them that would be considered discriminatory Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, but uh, you know, to a certain extent, you've got some freedom here. I, I like the so uh, a comment one of these guys made. He says, uh, "You know, uh, um, concentrate, Pinky, concentrate." Um, some discounts are offered to students. Should restaurants be condemned for discriminating against non-students? Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, you know, and, and the goofy thing is, if he said, if it was, you know, discounts to to just people at this one particular church, I mean, like, if the guy's a member, if the owner is a member, and you go in there, and he says, oh, hey, John, or, you know, good to see you, and, and uh, oh, let me, let me give you a discount just because you're my friend or whatever, he could do that, too. It's his store, you know, as long as, you know, I mean, he, he can do that, <laughs> So, so yeah, he could even get away with that if he was careful how he did it. I mean, you couldn't, um, well, you know, you look at, uh, you know, Lutheran day at the ball field or, or something like that, you know, there's, there's stuff like that too, that where, um, now that's usually subsidized by like Thrivent or, you know, or something like that. Um, and they pretty much handle it, but you know, they'll, they'll do, uh, depending where you're at and that they'll have, uh, you know, hey, welcome to this particular group or that, or, you know, um, so, you know, I, I can remember that kind of thing. So, eh. Right. However, if you convert from being a Denny's eater to being a Wendy's eater, that might get you in trouble. <laughs> yeah, they could kill you just from the cholesterol alone. But <laughs> That's right. Um so there's uh, an Ohio teenager, Rifka Berry, uh, 17 years old, and she ran away from uh, her home in Ohio to Florida uh, because um, her family threatened to kill her from converting from Islam to Christianity. Uh, she says, they have to kill me because I'm Christian. It's an honor issue. She's, uh, um, her parents, or, or actually she is a non-citizen. Her parents are from Sri Lanka. And uh, she's been staying with an Orlando couple that are pastors of a Christian church there. And she met him on a Facebook prayer group. 
So uh, the father denies uh, that he ever threatened to kill his daughter because she rejected Islam. Um, so she is currently in the custody of the Department of Children and Family Services, um, probably in a foster home somewhere. And um, it's, although it, it says that she's been staying with this couple, so I don't know if they are. I have a hunch that they probably had to move her um, out of that house. So she's been staying with them. I don't know if she still is. Um, but if her safety, you know, if her location has some. I, I remember when we were doing foster care, there were a few times where they said, do not let the birth parents find out where you live. Um, because there were some possibilities of, you know, safety issues going on. And, uh, so they may have moved her, but boy, what a, um, you know, and, and whether, whether, whether this is true or whether she just sort of, um, is, is, is afraid that it might be the case. I mean, you know, you know, maybe he's maybe heard, heard, maybe, maybe the father has made, has made comments, comments to that regard before she, before she became a Christian. Christian. And, um, and uh, so she says so she just is going, going based on what he has said in the past or, 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 um, you know, you, you, know, you, you hear, hear about, that, about that kind of thing, kind of thing happening. Um, 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 it has, has happened on many, many, many times. And, and so, so uh, in fact, in fact, in, uh, in, uh, another, another story, story that was up this, this week, week that Jim posted, Jim posted, uh, posted uh, about some, uh, another uh, person, uh, person in um, Egypt, uh, Egypt was, uh, was trying to convert to, to Christianity, Christianity and, and uh, yeah, having a hard time of it because the Egyptian government wouldn't let him. So, which happens a lot too. It, but, you know, this sort of reminds me of the difference between, say, the United States and, uh, um, and in a place like uh, like Cuba, right? The United States is having a problem with too many people coming in. Cuba's having a problem with people leaving and trying to keep them in. All right? Why? Because the United States is at least perceived um, as a better place to be. All right? Well, what's what's going on here? Um, if you want to become a Christian? Great. You know, uh, you don't want to be a Christian anymore. Well, I I'm sad to hear that. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm not going to threaten you to be one. Uh, whereas, you know, with Islam, oh boy, you, you've, and, and again, this is, um, this is arguably the, the radical, um, Islam and that not all Muslims are like this, but, um, that, but still, there's you know there's a significant number of people that um, within the group that that say, no, oh, you want to leave, you're dead, literally. You will die. Well, um, there's a follow-up story just came out just published today on Fox News. Uh, they talked from a bunch of legal experts who say she'd probably get sent back because she's still a minor at age 17. Um, but one of the people they interviewed is Dr. Phyllis Chesler an author and professor of psychology at uh, Richmond College at City University of New York. And she said she believes this uh, 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 young girl will be in danger if she's sent back to her parents. Anyone who converts from Islam is considered an apostate, an apostasy is a capital crime. If she's returned to her family, if she is lucky, they will isolate her, beat her, threaten her. And if she is not persuaded to turn to Islam, they'll probably kill her. They have no choice. And we've had several, you know, honor killings and things done here in America already. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, she said that she had to hide her Bible, sneak out for prayer meetings. Um, but um, if she lived in, if the family lived in Florida, they could do an emancipation. But um, Ohio doesn't have an emancipation statute, so uh, you know she's going to have to go back. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that w w was going to happen. Now, I would assume um, that I would hope that uh, the human services or, or whatever the department is called here in Ohio, that um, they would be watching that family like a hawk. And, yes, it says that. Um, and, and that, you know, I mean, this girl is going to, if anything happens, you know, it, it sounds like she's bold enough 
that she's going to go report this. She's, you know, all it's going to take is for her to talk to a teacher at school or something like that. And, you know, if they all of a sudden pull her out of school or something like that, you know, something's going on. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, hopefully just the fact that she, that this is so public that that'll protect her. By my life or death, I can protect you. Yep. So, but you know, it could be worse. The parents could be members of the Westboro ba- uh, Baptist Church. <laughs> yes, they could be. Oh, but would anybody really care? You know, this is all right. So this is a. Um, it's basically a blog post um, from the Chicago Tribune, but and it was should religion writers cover Westboro Baptist Church? All right. Now we've covered them more than once. Um, not real often because it's kind of the same old stuff. Um, but, but we even asked that question. There's only a, there's only 80 people in this church who really cares. Right. And you know, they do this bizarre, ridiculous stuff. And so, you know, just because you're doing a news show, um, or you know, you're the newspaper or whatever, um, this is bizarre stuff, and 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 it's it's interesting to talk about. Um, there's certainly plenty to say about it, but mm-hmm. at the same time, the question that this article is asking, and really the the writer is asking it of himself, and it's the same question that we've asked of ourselves, is by covering this, are we giving them credence? Are we giving them what they want? Uh, you know, and, and you know, talked about you know, uh, um, you know, um, you know, they had a uh, there's a protest and they showed up and they had you know uh, hundreds of people protesting against them. You know, and you know, we had a situation up here at uh, one of our schools. They did this. Um, play about Matthew Shepard, the gay kid who got killed out in Wyoming, and um, one of the local high schools. And Fred Phelps' group showed up. There were just a handful of them. But they were there protesting. And all these teachers and students, you know, moved by the Gay Straight Alliance, you know, stood out there to show solidarity, yada, yada, yada. And uh, so the, one of the kids at the school was telling me about this, you know, my kids at my church. And um, he's like, you know, I, you know, I, I, he said, you know, I, I had to stand up and, you know, oppose it because of who they, the way they were coming across. It was very negative, and I, I thought I heard our witness as a church. I said, I said, I looked at him and said, you know what? I, I didn't think you guys should have done. Ignore them. I said, if I said if the newspaper didn't write about them. If you guys just walked by and ignored them and didn't do this protest, you would have driven them up a flipping wall. Because they live for that kind of publicity. They live for that um, that 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 um, confrontation. That's yeah. what they want. They want the publicity. If you had just ignored them, they wouldn't know what to do. They would have been they would have been furious with you. Because they would have gotten even more extreme. Because they want the publicity. That's what they're in. There. That's what they're in there for. They're not doing this. I mean, okay, you know, do I believe homosexuality is is against God's word? Yes. Anybody who watched this show should know that. Mm-hmm. But these guys, I mean, walking around saying, you know, God ha- hates gays. Uh, gay is God abhors you. Uh, that is no. That is not what we. You know, God abhors all sin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, signs that say God hates you. No, I'm sorry. God doesn't hate anybody. God sent Jesus to die on the cross for everybody. That's not hate. God hates sin. He loves us. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. All right. Pretty familiar. Even Fred Phelps should know that. But um, so, yeah, to to come across it, you know, I I think if anything, yeah, we want to. We want to speak out against them, um, just to say no. That's not what we believe. Because I mean, the problem is, is that it's it's sort of the the nature of of things to say. Uh, well, yeah, you've got um, 
you've got th- th- this Fred Phelps. Oh yeah, just you know Fred Phelps and and all the other gay bashers, or the all the other people that are that believe homosexuality is sin. See, this is what it leads to. Like, no, that's what it leads to for Fred's family and you know a couple dozen other people, not the rest of the world. You know, yeah. he's. It's not like he's gaining members. It's not like he's the next Joel Osteen or something. You know. Yeah, that, that's. By the way, that's that I was, I was interested. It's just that it's mostly made up of Phelps own family members. I wondered who was a member of this church. <laughs> yeah. So it's just you know, it's a handful of nut jobs. <laughs> you know, and you know what they're what they're doing has absolutely nothing to do with you know. The, you just take a look at at what these guys are doing, and compare it with Jesus' ministry, okay? You know, and, and what did, did Jesus go around picketing and and saying God hates you and all that kind of stuff? No, all right. He met people where they were at, all right. He yes, he you know he did make a point of saying, look, go and sin no more, okay. But he was there to offer forgiveness, all right? Fred Phelps and his group have no forgiveness for anybody. They're they're not offering, they're not even saying, you know, repent so that you can be forgiven. All right. They're just saying, God hates you. Give it up. Go away. You know, this is God's vengeance on you. And, you know, and so sometimes I've, I've heard people uh, take those, those sort of vengeance passages from the Bible. And like, they'll say, um, you know, boy, it says, uh, it's, uh, God's vengeance is on the third and fourth generation um, of of those who hate him. And um, and they go, oh, see, you know, you're being punished for the sins of your parents or, or whatever. And, but, you know, they always quote the first half of that, but they skip the second half that says, but it, um, but his, his mercy is on the thousandth generation of those who love him. You know, it's a contrast. The whole point of it is to say, yes, God is a just God. But he's a thousand times more merciful than he is just, you know. And there's no mercy. There's no gospel. There's no. Um, it's like uh, uh, Michael Bridges from Lost and Found once said to me. He said, "You know, if it's not the good, if there's no good news, then it's not the good news." You know, there's no good news in what Fred and his group are saying. Right, and, and there's not. But the question is again, how much? Do, do we know they're extremists? We know they're, you know, a bunch of nutballs. So how much, you know, how much attention do you give these people? You know, and it said that it's interesting because he's big, in this case, he's been protesting at synagogues. Um, you know, if the, um, um, and one of the synagogues, they, they, that's what they did. They just ignored him. You know, they didn't do, they didn't put up a counter protest. They just walked right by and, Paid no attention to him whatsoever, and uh, you know, gee, you know, I, I said, you know, we know he's extreme. We don't, we don't think he's worth our time. Although I gotta say, I do like the motorcyclists that um, that band to- together every time <laughs> these guys show up, and when they start shouting to try to interrupt things, <laughs> these guys rev their motorcycles to drown them out. I don't know. You know, I, I tend to. You can ignore them. I think that's a, a worthwhile way to do it. Or, um, you know, the way I like to respond is is just to sort of point out how absolutely ridiculous they are, um, and and just have fun with them. <laughs> you know, it's like eh, if you're gonna make my life miserable, I'm gonna have fun with you. <laughs> if you're gonna be here and and be obnoxious, that's fine. Let's 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 see what we can do with that. <laughs> Now go away! So, yeah, they don't like ridicule either. Or I shall taunt you a second time. Yeah, well, yeah, and that's all you can do. I mean, you know, but I think it's a good question of uh, at what point do we sit back and say, no, you know, this is, this is not going to work. Ah, don't do that! Yeah, so, you, you know... know th- th- I don't know. So, I mean, see, we're still doing it. You know, we're st- we're still covering them just by by talking about them again. Um, you know, don't expect a whole lot else. Like I said we the, the I still post the stories up on Crossfeed. You know, it's interesting, but um, you know, we don't really cover them all that much. But I I wanted to do this story just because this is something that we struggle with as just by doing a religious news show. You know, you almost have to um, to cover them once or twice. Um, but 
eh, it, you know, been there, done that. So, enough of him. So that's it for tonight. So, um, oh, I want to do a shout out to anybody that's watching this on TiVo. I just realized uh, a night or two ago that our uh, feed, the way that it's formatted, was not uh, compatible with TiVo. And uh, so starting with this episode, we're going to um, run a separate stream. Um, that's, it's, they're going to be slightly larger files, but, uh, if you're, if you've got a T an internet connected TiVo, um, you've probably got enough bandwidth to handle it and, uh, it's still going to be smaller than, you know, like an HD thing or something. So if you have a series three, or, um, or, or HD TiVo or something like that, um, we're going to have a separate feed. And so if anybody out there is interested that you've been watching the old feed, um, and, uh, and you're interested in, in watching this actually on your TV, um, you know, if you got too big of a screen, it might not look so good because uh, you can still only um, squeeze so much uh, down your internet streams, um, you know, as far as us doing this, sending video back and forth. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if, if you... I know for me, I love watching video podcasts on my TV just because it's a lot more comfortable. I don't have to sit and, you know, kind of squint at the little screen and that. So, um, so I'm going to make this available that way. Uh, and, uh, there is, you just go to, um, you, you go find the, the podcast. See, that didn't used to be available in video. It used to be just audio. And so, um, but now that video is available too, uh, you can, just type in our uh, stream uh, feed, uh, our domain, and the URL. That's it. <laughs> Sorry. And and then you can just put that right in there, and, and then you can watch us on your TiVo. So uh, if anybody tries it out, or if you're this, um, how you're watching us, let us know and, and, and let us know what you think. Uh, and for that matter, speaking of letting us know what you think, um, if you have comments, if, if, if you think your, your pastor has been, uh, snagging his sermons, off, um, online, um, and, and tell us what you think about that. Um, or, uh, or maybe, maybe you think he should, <laughs> Hey, you know, there's some really good sermon sites out there. Maybe you want to look at those. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, let us know what you think, um, about any of the stuff we talked about tonight or, or anything else we'd, we'd love to hear from you. So you can send us an email at podcast at crossfeednews.com. Ah, a chain letter. Ah, I touched it. I touched it. Ah! Ah! Anything else on your end, Jim? Oh, nothing else on my end. Um, with any luck, our next episode... Uh, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about the ELCA's um, church, uh, church-wide assembly. If you haven't heard yet, uh, they voted to support a um, social statement. Tomorrow, Friday, they're supposed to vote on changing their ministry policies. And we're hoping to be able to have an ELCA pastor and commentator um, present with us for an interview. Uh, we can talk to him and get some perspective. Uh, uh, some of his uh, perspectives on what took place. So uh, we're really hope we've never done this before. Never been able to interview anybody. We've talked about it, but we're really hoping to make this happen for our next episode. So, yeah, so no promises, but look to know, see that. It should be quite exciting. It. So, all right. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, love to hear from you, and good night, and God bless. Bye.